What is up you guys, it's Hamid Abdul or Ham here and today we're going to be doing a quick video similar to last week's on how to make a block that stores our power up prefabs and determines which one to spawn for our player. It's going to be kind of a watered down version leading into the next couple of videos because I still haven't worked out the kinks on how we're going to get our mushrooms and fire flowers to move if we so choose to if you so choose to do so but anyway let's go right on to unity and as you can see we have from last video we have our coin block working and it's just using a core routine to wait and yield and get our coins going and then give us the points for the coins that we see so yeah I'm still working out the job. I'll get that probably hopefully next video too, but let's without further ado Let's get right into what we're gonna do today. So before we get started Let's make a material for our power-up block and let's just go create a new material We've been creating new materials since the first video. So yeah uh, power-up block Do 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 Unlet color make this I don't know some type of brownish red. I'm digging the brownish red. So let's say yeah, that uh that that's fine. Anyway, if that doesn't work for you, pick something else. Um what we're gonna do is we're gonna save time and cheat. So we're gonna go to our brick block, control D or just duplicate and then Basically what we have here, let's move this to the side here, rename this power up block. Okay, get this going, remove the brick block script and remove our, let's go and change. So just drag and drop the material we just created onto the power block power up block and there you go it has everything we need so um yeah this is let's create this prefab real quick oh, oh no wait sorry we need to change this coin spawn to a power up spawn so we're not confusing ourselves i mean you could just universally name them spawn because that's what we do in the script anyway so um yeah let's go to prefabs make that all right and now before we get into our script we're gonna make a um we're gonna make our fire flower and mushroom script a mushroom prefab so what we're gonna do is just cheat again and go and select our power up block and control D control D or wait sorry just control D once um go to scale put this to about 0.5 and x-axis 0.5 and y-axis uh yeah delete this power spawn child rename this mushroom and other than create a new material we'll just set it the same material as the player unless you so otherwise want to make something new and yeah put this about here for now just for now and then control d duplicate name this one name one of the clones fire flower and just simply change the color and I'm gonna just change it to the color of the brick this time um, obviously you can change it to whatever you want so right now we have two we have our mushroom and this flower fire flower that we're moving around what we're gonna do is um put them both in our prefabs make prefabs with them and then delete them get them out of our scene all right now we're gonna go back to our power up block and then we're gonna go make a script and its name power up block so yeah create an ad let's open this up reload mm, wait sorry let me double tap again there we go and for those of you running I'm uh, wondering I'm using Visual Studios and um, I promise to leave a link and the video the video description for how to get Windows um, Visual Studios for Unity but there's so many tutorials well there's a 
bunch of tutorials out there but I'll leave a link so yeah um so first up what we're gonna do is get rid of all of us and let's go and make some public variables for us to play with in the um, editor so we're gonna do public game object mushroom you could name it mushroom prefab but whatever uh, public game object fire flower I don't even know if I spelled it like that in the um when I was making the prefab then let's go public game object spawn point or spawn it doesn't even matter I mean just stick with spawn and then um, what we're gonna do is use a void on trigger enter 2d and we don't really need any parameters inside of this function so we're good to just go right ahead so what we want to do is basically determine okay we have two very we have two things that we want to spell instantiate that's if I'm giving it away here we're gonna use the instantiate method and so what we're gonna do is we have two things that we want to instantiate but determined on the players state or you know if they've already gotten the mushroom or not determines if we're gonna instantiate the fire flower so basically when you play Mario you you get a mushroom okay you're good you're like raised to the next player state and if you get to another power up block before your player state falls then you get a fire flower but if you're if you still have the mushroom and your player state falls or you get hit or damage or anything you go back to the baseline and if you go under the baseline then you die it's game over go back to the checkpoint but um yeah anyway so what we're going to want to do is go back to our player controller script and make a public uh, static integer called player state uh, there we go and in the start function let's just say player state equals zero so that's our baseline player state equals zero let's make a new comment uh, baseline state for the player comments are good comments are always good okay um sorry let's go here okay and basically what we're gonna do we, are, we know that we're using the instantiate method so that's gonna be all wrapped up in an, a giant if statement but before we go on let's let's just see what happens okay so instantiate then we have to choose what we're instantiating and that's in this case gonna be a mushroom we want to instantiate the mushroom first before anything what's the position of the uh, what's going to be the position of the instantiated object simple the spawn dot position or no dot transform dot position and then simple the third one is just your rotation or quaternion so you can do transform dot rotation but in this case I'm just going to use quaternion dot identity um so yeah that that's gonna work that's gonna spawn it exactly where we want it but the thing is like I said unless we wrap this statement and um enclose this method in an if statement and put a put some type of functionality for what happens if our player state is rise with the player state the way we define and player controller script uh, this will do us no good because you will just instantly keep on getting mushrooms and that's not what we want so let's go here let's say if player state player controller dot player state equals zero let's do equals equals and I'm gonna press enter go down here go to alt uh, and then let's go to else if I do not like how this is this is freaking me out. I do not like how this is ended. It. Sorry. Give me just. There we go. I like that so much better. Else, if player controller dot player state is greater than or equal to one, then what we're gonna do is 
do the same exact thing instantiate but this time we're going to instantiate our flower our fire flower and then same tr transform I'm um, same position um, so transform dot position Cortonian dot identity okay so this is all fine and dandy and it'll work but the thing is let me go ahead and yeah get that there well, these are fine I was just that oh yeah no this is just weird I don't I don't like that okay ah, damn, damn it ah. anyway hey I'll fix that later it doesn't matter Let's save our script go back to our go back to unity this is fine and dandy if we go to our power up block we see all these um, public variables that we establish and what we can do is just go and get these where they belong so mushroom fire flower and then our spawn point is simply going to be here let's scroll all the way up to our power up um, block and press apply and this sets it for every single prefab that we will instantiate or that we will put in the scene or every instance of the prefab that will be in the scene from this point on unless we apply again after changing the settings so let's just play let's see what happens okay so mushroom clone you see that right there mushroom clone mushroom clone mushroom clone mushroom clone not cool one um right now since we don't have any functionality of keeping track of our player state i'm going to kind of cheat for the purposes of keeping this video short and splitting this up in multiple tutorials just because it kind of works for me and i have to go to class anyway it's like 756. so what we're going to do all right so after this if 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 else and else if else else i can't speak if after this block of code runs what we want to do is destroy this script and basically when you basically destroy this and it's going to destroy the script not the game object uh, that the script is attached to which is perfect for what we're trying to do here and then we're just going to print you know hey one and done everybody gets one like the spider-man from family guy everybody gets one so basically um so when you play mario hopefully you've played mario you hit a hit a power up block and you lose your power up you try to go back to it and nothing there's nothing else you only get one so that's what we're doing here this is limiting so once you hit it you better get it or it's done well in this case the player doesn't really have to worry about it because it's staying there and we're going to worry about fixing that next video or next couple of videos so anyway so yeah um basically for the purpose of this video we're going to cheat and say since we don't have a way of keeping track we're going to say um once the mushroom spawns our player controller dot player state equals one we don't want to say plus equals one because after a while that'll accumulate so much and it, once we actually keep a way of um, keeping track of our player state and you want to decrement it every time it gets hit it would just do minus one and your player would be like plus 10 and that's not cool so we would just want to keep it you know hey if you have a mushroom um, you're one if you have a fire flower you're two so and a star well, that's that's let's not even get into that player controller player state equals two so yeah that's just that's just gonna set it to where, where it is now this isn't gonna stay this way so you know hey keep that in mind this isn't gonna stay this way forever and a lot of this may change so up uh, now we're get out of here um so yeah let's make another power up block and let's put it right 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 next to the this one so let's go okay let's say do 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 mushroom let's try to hit it again nothing do 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 fire flower because after we hit it the first time this cube basically raises our player state and we're at one and then if we try to go over here and hit it another time even if we don't get the mushroom like i said this is going to stay that way idealistically we want to track the player state 
raising with the prefab which we haven't even gotten to yet but that will be in the next couple videos you go and you hit the next power up block and fire flower clone instantiates and bada bing bada boom your player stage two so that's just about it for this video um i have to go quickly stretch read exercise and eat my oatmeal all before class it's cow too so wish me the best of luck anyway i hope this video was a lot of help to you in some ways like i said i'm not perfect at this so if you know anything more than me that which a lot of you probably do then feel free to leave in the comments hey dark skin you left this wrong so yeah man or yeah you guys just let me know and i hope i hope there's some girls out there too because as you can see follow my mouse follow my mouse yesterday was national women's day awesome holy crap it's eight o'clock so um yeah um save your scene save your project save everything save your script and um hopefully i'll see you in the next tutorial thanks thank you so much bye and this is like my third time testing because I am a klutz and such a goofball. So anyway, without further ado, let's get on right into it. So we're gonna go.